Hello everybody, welcome to Toy Tutor U Curator's Corner, episode number six. My name's Sean Brosnan, I'm a curator at Toy Tutor Otago Settlers Museum here in Dunedin. I'm offering these short uh, video clips, telling stories of Dunedin's early days as infotainment for our museum visitors during the great coronavirus lockdown of 2020. Today's episode is about Dunedin's first church, and by that I don't mean the magnificent Gothic edifice atop Bell Hill, that only opened in 1873. No, I'm talking about the first first church from back in 1848. Now this was a prefabricated structure that had been brought out on board the ships, its windows, its doors, its framing, and in July of 1848, so just a few months after the settlers arrived, a contract was let out to a joiner named John Ferguson, a passenger on the Philip Lang, to put that all together and finish it off with pitsawn timber from Otago Peninsula, which she duly did. The church opened for business on the first Sunday in September of 1848. Now, it was a pretty basic sort of structure, a rectangular block. It had uh, it was painted white on the outside. It had wooden shingles for a roof. Inside, rough, bare rafters, small windows, quite dark and gloomy, but it did have a fireplace for heating. Now, unfortunately, when Ferguson handed it over to Thomas Burns, there was no seating inside. So for those first few months, worshippers had to stand during his services, and that must have been quite a challenge given the length of Presbyterian sermons in those days. Now this is a structure that we can see in Charles Kettle's view of Dunedin from Stafford Street in 1849. Now as well as being the church, it doubled as the school, and school began at the end of September 1848, so that's the formal date of the beginning of education systems in Otago. But it wasn't just a church and a school, it was also a library. In March of 1849, Burns opened a library there with a thousand or so books that he'd brought out with him on the Philip Lang, and which had been added to by other ships coming later. Amongst them, he had obviously a lot of theological works and biographical stuff, but he also had some contemporary fiction. He had poetry, Milton and Burns. He had works of Shakespeare. He had a whole set of the Encyclopedia Britannica, plus other contemporary sort of stuff from Scotland of the day. So some quite good reading there. Burns acted as the librarian himself, and he used to hand out the books on Saturday evenings. But uh, at the end of working days, he also used to let people gather there, and he'd read out the newspapers, perhaps to those who couldn't read for themselves. So it was kind of a communal hall. And given the lack of other sort of buildings in Dunedin where you could have events, it was the place where all the concerts, all the meetings, all those sort of events were held in Dunedin at that time. It was even the site of the first public health initiative in Dunedin at the beginning of 1850 when Burns announced from the pulpit that the newly arrived Dr William Purdy was offering free vaccinations against smallpox. Now that was a real scourge in communities in that time when it broke out, so that must have been a real boon. But the building itself was really too small. When it opened, it only had capacity for 200 worshippers, and the congregation quickly grew larger than that. So in short order, uh, two additions were added to it. First of all, this little strange octagonal bit at the back, which was a vestry and library, and then a whole extra wing, doubling its capacity to 400 worshippers. And that bit was lined with bluestone, as you can see in the early photographs of it. Well... What happened to it, this first first church, the most useful and well-used structure in the entire settlement for Dunedin's first few years? Well, by the late 1850s, it was way too small for the congregation's needs, so in 1864, a much larger replacement was added just up the street in Dowling Street for it. And the old church, it was rented out to be a wool store. But it didn't suffer that indignity for long. In January of 1865, a massive fire broke out in central Dunedin, racing along Princes Street, spreading down Dowling Street, and the old first church was one of its victims, completely obliterated. The replacement church was narrowly saved. Now, after its demise, the Reverend Thomas Burns paid it a heartfelt of rather florid tribute, and I want to quote from his words as he describes the much-beloved old church. The poor old church... Never was there an honester, a more faithful servant. Its sacred, its proper work was on Sunday, but from Monday to Saturday it held itself ready for all service. It was a schoolroom. It was a public lecture room. It lent itself to many a stormy political meeting. With patriotic zeal it accommodated the provincial council. It gave an honourable reception to His Excellency the Governor-General. It lent itself to many a concert, many a musical party. It was equally at the command of all. For 17 long years, it had occupied with the utmost credit to itself the high and honourable position of the First Church of Otago. But in one sad hour, 
it fell from its higher state. It was converted into a wool shed. It sank down to the level of a common hired drudge of the lowest grade. The poor thing never recovered from the blow. It died of a broken heart. It perished like a martyr at the stake. It breathed its last in the midst of a devouring fire. Peace be with the ashes of our poor old church. So there's the story of Dunedin's first church. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you might like to subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon so you get notified of subsequent episodes. And there will be more of those as this lockdown continues. So we'll see you next time.